The freshwater angelfish belongs to a very large family of fish species known as the cichlids. Cichlids are well known for their amazing diversity, their highly evolved reproductive strategies, and their natural tendency to be very aggressive. In the wild, it's perfectly normal for a group of angelfish to display some aggressive behavior, and serious injuries among the combatants are probably fairly rare. However, in the confines of the aquarium, aggressive behavior can turn deadly overnight. The goal of this video is to provide a greater understanding of the root causes of aggression in angelfish and provide some possible solutions that might help stop them from fighting. I've divided angelfish aggression into three different categories based on where the aggression is directed. The first category is reproductive aggression, and that's the aggressive behavior that occurs between a pair of angelfish who are either preparing to spawn or actively caring for their young. Reproductive aggression can take a few different forms, and one of those forms is the fitness test. The fish seen here are engaged in a fitness test using a behavior known as lip locking. This display of aggression requires a great deal of strength and endurance, and it's a good way for both fish to determine the relative fitness of a potential mate. Female angelfish are very selective about which male they choose to mate with, and prefer to spawn with males who are aggressive, because aggressive males are more successful at claiming and defending the territory needed for spawning. Aggressive males also do a better job of protecting the eggs and the fry, so it's no wonder then that male angelfish tend to be more aggressive than females, especially when they're about to spawn. It's important to keep in mind that lip-locking is also used by non-paired fish as a way to establish dominance and create a pecking order based on size, strength, and level of aggression. So, just because your fish are lip-locking does not necessarily mean that they're a breeding pair. Another form of reproductive aggression that can occur happens when a pair of angels begin to have disagreements over how to properly care for their young. Believe it or not, angelfish couples can have trust issues where one of the parents starts to drive away the other because they think their partner might be a threat to the eggs or the fry. For instance, an inexperienced male might start eating the eggs which would then cause the female to start attacking the male. Or, a young male who fails to properly protect the fry might cause the female to reject her partner and attempt to seek a new mate. The female might also be a poor parent who repeatedly fails to tend to her eggs, and then the male drives her away so that he can seek out a more suitable breeding partner. Or, let's say you forget to feed the fish and a young female gets hungry, so she eats a few of her fry. Unfortunately, the male happens to see her eating his children and now begins attacking their mother. As you can see, there are a whole host of issues that can cause angelfish pairs who may have gotten along fine in the past to suddenly begin fighting. In the wild, if a breeding pair was no longer getting along for whatever reason, one of the two fish would be able to swim off and find a more suitable partner. Unfortunately, this is not an option in the aquarium, and if there's nowhere to go, someone is going to get hurt. However, the final outcome will depend on the personalities of the fish. Some pairs do eventually work things out, while others don't. It's important to note that in the wild, angelfish switch partners each breeding season, so having one partner all the time is not really a situation that they're fully adapted to. And it's not uncommon for a bonded pair of angelfish to begin fighting after a failed spawn or after their eggs have been removed from the breeding tank by a fish keeper. Returning to our list, we now come to the second and perhaps the most deadly type of aggression, competitive aggression. This behavior occurs in groups of angelfish that are competing with each other for mates, territory, and food. And who gets what depends on where you are in the pecking order of the group. And where you are in the pecking order is decided by your physical well-being, your size, and your level of aggression. 
The males in the group will try to assert their dominance with aggressive behavior in order to claim and defend a territory suitable for spawning. Then they try to pair up with a dominant female and prepare a site to lay eggs. And this is where the real aggressive behavior begins as two dominant fish join forces and claim a portion of the aquarium as their own. And it's not just the males who fight for dominance. Females will also fight amongst themselves for mates, territory, and food. However, once a pecking order has been established, several young angelfish can live together in the same aquarium, and the tank can stay relatively calm for quite a while. However, those young angelfish will eventually reach sexual maturity and then begin to form breeding pairs. Then the aggression will escalate as two dominant angelfish fight off other angelfish and anything else in the tank that might enter their territory and pose a threat to their offspring. And here's one additional note about lip locking. Lip locking occurs when neither fish in a confrontation is willing to back down, so it typically happens between two similarly sized individuals who then battle until one of them submits. And, once everyone knows their place in the pecking order, then the lip-locking behavior usually subsides. However, changes over time to the breeding status, as well as changes in the health and well-being of the fish, can shake up the established pecking order and cause a once peaceful group of angelfish to suddenly start fighting. My final point here is that any sort of instability in the pecking order can cause aggressive behavior as each fish adjusts to its new position in the hierarchy. In fact, these two angelfish that you see here usually get along really well, but they're fighting now because they were placed in separate tanks for a while, and they've just recently been reunited. So they've been lip-locking like this on and off for the past few hours as they become reacquainted with each other, and soon they'll begin to spawn again. And that brings us to the third and final type of aggressive behavior, intraspecific aggression, and this is aggressive behavior that's directed at other species. Angelfish make fairly peaceful residents of a community tank until they decide to form pairs and lay eggs, and then it's anything goes. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that a community tank with multiple angelfish in it is a ticking time bomb, and eventually someone is going to get hurt. However, other than when they're breeding, most angelfish get along fine with their tank mates. And just to be thorough, angelfish are fairly aggressive with small fish that they're about to eat. And those are the three types of aggression seen in angelfish. Some aquariums have all three, while others have none. The angelfish tank setup with the greatest potential for problems with aggression is a community tank containing several young angelfish. And I'm guessing that this scenario accounts for most of the angelfish tank setups out there. And why shouldn't it? I can certainly see the appeal. A majestic group of angelfish gliding through a planted community tank is a beautiful sight to behold. However, peaceful setups like this containing multiple angelfish are short-lived, and it's only a matter of time before those angels reach sexual maturity and the constant fighting begins. Some male angelfish can turn hyper-aggressive overnight, and then you wake up in the morning to find that all of the other fish in the aquarium are backed into a corner by a single aggressive fish. Or, two dominant fish have formed a pair, and they're preparing to spawn, so they've decided that they now own this half of the aquarium. The length of time that you can keep a group of angelfish together peacefully is determined by three important factors. How long it takes for them to reach sexual maturity, the size of the aquarium, and the number of angelfish in the tank. The only viable solutions to fighting in angelfish will address one or more of these three factors. Any solutions that don't address at least one of these are temporary solutions at best. 
These are the three best possible options to keep angelfish from fighting. If you insist on keeping several angelfish in one tank, here are some suggestions that will help you reduce the fighting. You can reduce their tendency to fight by lowering the water temperature in the aquarium, which will slow down their metabolism and lengthen the amount of time that it takes for the fish to reach sexual maturity. You can also increase the size of their aquarium, which will buy you some time, but you're going to have to go really big to keep a group of six fully mature angelfish together without a lot of fighting and some injuries. Having a densely planted tank is also helpful because it makes it harder for the fish to see each other. Plus, it gives the weaker fish that are being picked on lots of places to hide. However, breaking up lines of sight so that they don't see each other all the time is really only effective for small fish in a large tank. Remember, fully mature angelfish are about the size of a dinner plate, so you'd need a very large, densely planted tank to keep them from seeing each other. Another possible solution is to try and spread the aggression out among several angels by housing eight or nine angelfish together so that no one fish gets too much abuse. However, cramming more angelfish into the aquarium does not change their natural tendencies to be aggressive. It won't help you, and it certainly won't help the fish. For starters, it stresses the angels, damages their beautiful fins, and makes it more difficult to keep their water clean, all of which can lead to fungal infections, disease, and a weakened immune system. Furthermore, overcrowding creates an environment where the three things that are most important to the fish are in short supply. These are space, food, and mates. A scarcity of any one of these things can lead to fighting. Incidentally, angelfish need approximately a one and a half to two foot radius around the site where they've chosen to lay their eggs. So don't crowd the fish by putting too many angels in the same tank and be sure to feed them an appropriate amount of food on a regular schedule to make sure that there's no food related aggression. It may also be helpful to feed them from two sides of the tank at the same time to help disperse the food throughout the aquarium so that everyone can get their fair share. And if you can't commit to a regular feeding schedule, using an auto feeder might be useful to help you reduce fighting that's food related. It's also important to pay close attention at feeding time to be certain that everyone is eating. If a fish is being bullied and it remains in a corner while everyone else eats, please remove it from the tank as soon as possible. Watch the fish every day and look for torn fins and damage to the lips or the body so that you'll be able to spot problems before they get really bad. And this is especially important when there are any changes or new additions to the tank. In fact, it's very helpful to introduce all of the angelfish to the tank at the same time and to strictly avoid adding new angelfish to an established pecking order. Many people also suggest changing around the plants and decorations in order to break up established territories, but new territories are quickly re-established, so this solution doesn't work for very long. Another solution that's sometimes mentioned is to just only put males or only females in the tank. This is also not an effective solution because they still fight over territories and food, and angelfish can be very difficult to sex accurately. And there's one final factor that I think it's important to be aware of. Large water changes can cause a once peaceful group of angels to suddenly start fighting because the new water dilutes the pheromone levels in the tank. And these changes in the pheromone levels have a dramatic effect on fish behavior. These changes are temporary, and it seems that the more water you change, the longer the duration of the increased aggression. If this is a problem in your aquarium, a good way to fix it is to do small but frequent water changes and to add the new water a little more gradually. 
I'd also like to suggest that you always have an extra tank available and ready to use in case there's trouble, so you don't get into a situation where you urgently need to move a fish, but it has nowhere to go. And please remember, when the angels are fighting, it's not their fault. They're aggressive because they care. They care about each other, and they care about their children. You see, unlike those loosey-goosey guppies who carelessly scatter their children to the current, the angelfish invest a great deal of time and effort into defending their territory so that they can raise their children in a safe environment. Please don't put these devoted parents into situations where they're destined to tear each other apart simply because you thought it would look pretty. Do your homework, learn about your fish, and make the right choice.